John 14 and 12, Jesus said, Great works have I done, but greater works shall ye do. GWC Ministries is a family-oriented ministry designed to teach God's Word. We share simplistic, practical teachings on who God is, why you are here, and where you fit in His plan. Our mission is to empower you to go forth and perform great works. Good morning, everybody. This is the Word Works broadcast. And listen, this is the day that the Lord has made and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Listen, is there anybody out there excited like I am for another Sunday? Anybody out there excited for another opportunity to give our God praise? Another opportunity to tell the Lord, thank you. Listen, I don't care what you went through this week, and it might have been hard. It might have been tough. It might have seemed like it was going to take you out. But I decree and I declare that because you were able to make it to Sunday, you got a right and you got a reason to praise God. And God, we just come before your throne, oh God, because we worship you, oh God. We come before your throne because we love you, God, and we magnify you, we glorify you, we lift you up, God. We praise your name, God, because you're wonderful, God. You're mighty, you're you're powerful, you're all-knowing, you're omniscient, you're, um, you're omnipresent, you're everywhere at the same time. You're omnipotent, God. You have all power, all powers in your hand, God. And Lord, we don't worship you for what you've done, God, but we worship you for who you are, God. Right now, God, we just want to worship you because of who you are, not because what you give us, oh God. We're thankful for what you give us. We're thankful for what you provide for us. But God, we just want to worship you because if you didn't do any of those things at all, God, you're still worthy to be worshiped. You're still worthy to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you because you're the God of our salvation. We worship you because you're the creator of every good and perfect thing. You're the father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. You're the giver of the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Oh my goodness, you're so kind, you're so thoughtful, you're so faithful, God. Oh my goodness, you're a faithful God. All of our needs, thy hands have provided Great is thy faithfulness, God. Morning by morning, new mercies we see. All that I have need of, thy hands have provided. So, Lord, great is thy faithfulness. Thank you, Jesus. You are faithful, God. You are dependable, God. You are loving, God. You are provide provision, God. You are our Jehovah Jireh. You provide for us, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. You are Jehovah Shalom, God. You are peace in times of trouble. Thank you, Jesus. Jehovah Rapha, when we get sick, you are our healer. Jeho you are Jehovah Nisi. You are our banner. You, are, you will fight for us every battle you fight God. And that's why we worship you. That's why we praise you. That's why we love you, God, for who you are, God. Because of who you are, we give you glory. Because of who you are, we give you praise. Because of who you are, we'll lift our voice and say, God, Lord, I love you because of who you are. Anybody out there love the Lord because of who he is? I need somebody out there that's listening to say, God, I love you, Lord, because of who you are. Because of who you are, I give you glory. Because of who you are, I give you praise. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I don't mind praising God. I love to worship. Do I have any worshipers out there? Where are the worshipers, oh God? Where are the worshipers at this morning? Can somebody worship the Lord with me in your living room? Why don't you get out of your seat? Don't just sit down. Get off of that couch if you got. If the Lord give you strength, stand up in front of that TV as though you're in front of the altar and begin to lift your hands up and surrender to the Lord. Begin to surrender to God and worship. Begin to look, say, Lord, here I am. Here I am, Lord. Use me, God. Here I am, God. Do what you want to do in me. Here I am, God. Make me over. I don't know about you all, but I want the Lord to make me over. Pastor Steve want to make over. Thank you, Jesus. I want to make over God. Lord, make me over again. Mold me. May shape me. Make me into what you want me to be, oh God. 
oh my God, I can't do it by myself. I can't clean myself up, but clean me up, oh God. Forgive us of our sins. Oh God, any of our sins, transgressions, and iniquities, oh God. Lord, we missed the mark this week. We may have fallen short this week, God, but oh my God, huh? get another chance. Huh? Give us another chance, oh God. Huh? Oh God, we don't come to you as self-righteous people, but we humble ourselves beneath your mighty hand, oh God. Thank you, Jesus. We don't always get it right, God, huh? but you're able to make us better, God, and your blood cleanses. The blood of Jesus cleanses you right now. The blood of Jesus cleanses you, my brother. The blood of Jesus cleanses you, my sister. The blood of Jesus he cleans you young man it cleanses you young woman thank you Jesus don't worry about what you did God has the power to forgive God has the power to wash you up God has the power to clean you up right now it's all right it's all right we all mess up sometimes thank you Jesus but oh my God all we got to do is come to the altar and say Lord here I am I'm sorry God Forgive me, oh God. Give me another chance, God. Make me over. Make me better, Lord. And just want to do a quick prayer. We want to pray for all of the class of 22 graduates at every level. Listen, it's an accomplishment when our people graduate. It doesn't matter if it's from preschool, kindergarten, eighth grade, middle school, high school, uh, college, uh, grad school. Uh, some people return back years later and got their degree. Amen. Who, if you got a diploma, a certificate, a GED, a uh, 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 a degree, whatever it is, we want to pray for you and we thank God and celebrate you right now. And God, we pray for every graduate, oh God, Lord, that you grant them success, oh God. Lord, that you help them to reach their next level, oh God. That it, you help them go to the next level in their education. Whatever their goals and their dreams are, God. Lord, keep them focused, oh God. Find the devil that would try to distract them, that would try to come against them and turn them away. Those predators out there, uh, uh, drugs and alcohol, uh, uh sexual immortality, things of those natures that would try to lure them away from their goal. But God, keep them focused, oh God. Keep them focused. And most importantly, God, let them keep you first. Give them to know that without you, then education means nothing if they don't have you. Because you said in all thy getting, get wisdom, but you said in all thy getting to get an understanding. And we pray that these people will go forth in the world and make this world a better place. Amen. And then also really quick, I just wanted to just uh, wish happy birthday, amen, to our uh, the young man, brother Caleb Sims, amen, who uh, does, you see, he does our praise and worship from time to time, amen. Today is brother Caleb's birthday, amen. And we have to give a shout out to brother Caleb today for his birthday. Happy birthday, Caleb, amen. I'm not going to tell your age, you can tell your age yourself. Young man, young man that's on fire for the Lord. He called me, me and my wife yesterday, first lady saying, and he just encouraged us. Listen, this young man called us up and he encouraged us. And I want to say thank you for that. Him and his lovely wife just encouraged us on yesterday. But happy birthday, Caleb. Turn up Caleb style. I know your wife going to uh, take good care of you, but happy birthday. And on behalf of G GWC, your family, we love you and we wish you a very happy birthday. Amen. God bless you, Caleb. And then finally, amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. Thank you, uh, Brother Evan. Let's, let's wish Brother Caleb, amen, a happy birthday. Amen. Our GWC family member. Amen. And then uh, finally, it's testimony time. Oh, my goodness. Listen. This is a great segue from talking about Caleb and his birthday because Caleb has more than just a reason to celebrate because it's his birthday. Listen, y'all, I don't know if y'all remember, but a few, just a few short weeks ago, we were on the broadcast praying for brother Caleb's mom who was on life support. Listen to me, y'all. She was on life support just a couple weeks ago. They were trying to make the decision whether to take her off or keep her on. They didn't know what they would do. They didn't know how they wanted to proceed. But the doctor was saying, y'all got to make a decision. 
Brother Caleb called us up and we had prayer. We got you all involved, our GWCE members, our Empower Partner, you, our viewers. We got on the live broadcast and began to pray. Listen, and I just want to tell you, Brother Caleb told me on yesterday, y'all y'all think miracles don't still happen. Here is a miracle. His mom is at home. Hallelujah. His mom is at home, y'all. She's been home for two days. Listen now, remember, she was on life support just a couple weeks ago, and they was ready to take the plug out. They, was, they didn't know where to proceed from them, but through the power of prayer, through the power of God's healing, oh my goodness, she is home, y'all. She's doing better. She's doing well, and he said that she's going to go to church today. Oh, my God, I love it when the Lord delivers somebody, heals somebody, and the first place they run to is to the altar so they can give God praise. God bless you, Mother Sims, right now, and we're yet praying for your continued healing. And, and listen, we're going to have her uh, give her testimony to us, too. Amen. Real soon, we're going to let her tell her own testimony, but we had to just stop. And when Caleb said, listen, we got to tell everybody, Pastor, what God did through the power of prayer. See what happens when we all come together in prayer? The Bible says when two or three come together, touching and agreeing on the same thing, he will be in the midst of. And he also said the effect of fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. So we praise God for the miracle. Again, she was on life support. Come on now, life support. And now she is home. I, I'm excited. My soul is excited. I'm so excited. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. He's still a miracle worker. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Wonderful woman of God. Faithful woman of God. He brought her out. Well, we're going to go into our message today. And we want to talk about plugging into the power source, the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be coming from Acts, the second chapter, verses one through four. And then we're going to go to the first, jump back to the first chapter, Acts 1, first chapter, in just the eighth verse. So we have it on the screen for you right there. And if you don't have your Bibles, don't worry, Pastor Steve is going to put it on the screen. And again, we thank you for joining us. This is Pastor Steve, your favorite online pastor. And this is the GWC Word Works broadcast. And we are excited that you joined us today for another powerful word from the Lord. Amen. This is Works Broadcast. Thank you for joining and come again. Please, you're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. All right. So going into our message, I want to talk about this because many times as our ministry's foundational motto is empowering you. GWC, Greater Works Church Ministries, empowering you to perform greater works. Amen. John 14 and 12, Jesus said, great works have I done, but greater works shall ye do because I go back to the Father. So listen, we're always talking about trying to empower you. When you listen to this broadcast, we want you to walk away empowered to do something, not just feel powerful. We're not talking about feeling powerful. We're talking about empowered or equipped motivated ignited amen you know we we will you are you are you are persuaded you are you are excited about going forth to perform a great work amen you get the tools that you need to go forth and do great things jesus was telling his disciples listen fellas i'm getting ready to leave here but i have given you all the tools you need you watch me do many things but I'm giving you, the, I'm empowering you to go do more than what I did. Amen. And that's what he meant by power, empowering. Amen. So what we want to talk about today is, well, where the power source come from? You can't get the power if you're not plugged in to the power source. Amen. I don't know about you. Let your, when your cell phone starts to get low and you see that battery go from green to red. You know it's time to get that phone hooked up to the power source. Amen. So you hurry up and you get that, that USB and you plug that charger in because you know you're not going to be able to use that phone long 
if it does not get the power it needs to do what you need it to do. Amen. And that's what we want to talk about today. Our soul as believers, we need to be empowered and charged up. And sometimes, and listen, we need to be recharged. It ain't no shame in getting a recharge. Just like that cell phone, you don't feel bad about recharging that battery. You just plug it in because it needs to be filled up again. And you try to get it all the way up to 100% because you want that power to last as long as you can. Amen. So it's the same way with your soul. It's the same way with your spirit. Your spirit needs to be connected to the power source, and then it needs to be charged up and recharged. Amen. We need a recharging. Amen. So, but the problem is if you don't plug up to the right source, you won't get the power. Amen. So we're going to go into our uh, verses today. And again, it's a praise uh talking about the day of Pentecost, which passed, but we still want to talk about getting the power of the Holy Spirit. A lot, listen, a lot of churches now don't want to talk about the Holy Ghost. A lot of churches now don't want to talk about the fact that people need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. That people need to have the Holy Ghost on the inside. And listen, I want to tell you, the Holy Ghost is not there just so you can shout around the church. Somebody said, well, I shouted. I remember when I was growing up, we we thought that we had the Holy Ghost because we shouted. Amen. You know, they start playing the music, the drums start going, the organ going, and everybody clapping, clapping. And listen, all of a sudden, then you break out. Woo! You get your dance on. Nothing wrong with that. Get your dance on every week at church. But now, don't mistake that as having the Holy Ghost. Because there's an old saying that if you play the right music, a horse will start prancing. Even over there in other countries, if you play the right music, they can a music, a charm or snake, and he'll come out the basket and he'll start dancing. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost that fills your soul, that fills your spirit, so that it empowers you to do the things that God has called you to do as a believer. So you can be helpful to the people of God and the kingdom of God. Yes, I'm telling we listen, we say it all the time. I remember we would get together on Sunday school with our friends. We ask each other, you gonna shout today? Oh, I'm shouting today. You come back to the musical tonight? Yeah, I'm shouting tonight. And again, nothing wrong with that. But the problem is if you shouting, and then after the shout, you still go back and do all the stuff that you was doing before you shouted. All the stuff that, and I'm telling you, I, I can be transparent. That's what I did. I went back to doing all the stuff I wanted to do, even after I shouted. You know, I went back and had me a little something to drink, went back and played around with the girls, did my stuff, you know. But, but as long as I came to church and I shouted, I felt like I was okay. But I had to learn that that's not what the empowering of the Holy Ghost is, does. It makes you do more than shout. Amen. Because emotion will make you shout. Emotion will make you cry. But you need a power that's going to get you through when trouble comes. You need a power that you can help the kingdom of God. And we're going to talk about some of those things that you get when you, amen, receive the power of the Holy Ghost and the Lord fills you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. And you get connected to the right source. All right. So let's go into it. All right, so we're going to go first to Acts, uh, verse 1, Acts 2, 1 through 4, and it reads as thus. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Verse 2, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Amen. It filled all the house where they were sitting. Verse three, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire, and it sat upon each of them. Verse four, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues or languages as the Spirit gave utterance. We're going to come back to that because that's very important. And then finally, the last verse, jumping over to Acts, the first chapter, the eighth verse, it says, but ye shall receive power 
after. Look at somebody on the couch next to you and say, after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Amen. I love the fact that it said after. Amen. That's right, Deanna. Hallelujah. I get excited when I talk about the Holy Spirit. Amen. So now we're going to go back up and give you a little background because you're saying, Pastor Steve, what is the day of Pentecost? Amen. Pentecost is 50 days after the Passover. Y'all remember when Jesus was crucified, amen, they had the Passover. And it was 50 days after that, they would celebrate Pentecost. And Pentecost, and that's where you get the term churches are Pentecostal, because it was a church that was birthed from the Holy Ghost. It was the church that was birthed from the Spirit of God that came down to uh, fill the hearts and souls of God's people. So 50 days after Passover, and we remember Passover was the, the annual commemoration of when God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt and the deaf angel came. And in order to keep the deaf angel from killing all the firstborn of Israel and Egypt, they were told to put the blood of a lamb over their doorpost and on the sides. And when the deaf angel came, he would see the blood and pass over their house. That's why all of the firstborn sons of Egypt and Pharaoh too were killed that night because they did not have the blood. So the deaf angel could not pass over them. So that's why they commemorate that every year, the Passover. And then 50 days after that, Pentecost took place. Amen. So I'm Pentecostal. Amen. That means that I operate from the power source of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean my denomination. Doesn't mean my religion. Doesn't make my religion or denomination better than somebody else's religion or denomination because it's not about religion. I'm not into religion. I'm about serving God. I'm about believing God. Amen. So we, on the day of Pentecost, it said when they were, it had fully come, they were all with one accord. Who is all of them? Remember Jesus told the disciples, he said, go ye, he said, go into the upper room. He said, and stay there until you be empowered from power from on high. He told them, he said, when well, I'm getting ready to leave, but I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost who will be the comforter and he will give you and teach you all knowledge and lead you into all truth. He is going to be the one that's going to come after me. Amen. See, as long as the, the disciples had Jesus with them, they didn't need the Holy Ghost because Jesus was the Holy Ghost because the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost are one. But he said, now, after I'm gone, I'm not going to leave y'all by yourselves but I'm going to send you a comforter, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. But he told him, he said, now I'm going to need you all to go up to the upper room. And he says, I want you to stay there until you be endowed. In other words, don't leave. And the Bible says it was probably about 120 of them up there in that upper room. It was men and women. So listen, it wasn't just a man thing. Amen. This was men and women, all of the disciples, the, all of the Marys, all of the Marthas, all of those that had walked with Jesus when he was alive. They were all up in that upper room in Jerusalem. Amen. And he said, stay there. Now, here's what I want to get. Nowadays, you can't get folk to stay in church two hours. You can barely get them to stay in church one hour. And oh my goodness, you can't get them to watch a broadcast like this for more than five minutes. But now Jesus told them to go in that room and stay there. And the background that says they were there probably about 10 to 10 to 12 days. That meant they stayed there. He said, don't leave. Just like the Azusa Street Revival in California years ago, where Bishop Charles Mason went to, they had the Azusa Street Revival, where they had service going on 24 hours a day. And I know what y'all saying right now. Ain't no way I'm staying in no church that long. But see, when they wanted something from God, it didn't matter how long they had to wait. 
And I know no doubt why they were in the upper room. They begin to wonder when it was going to happen. They begin to wonder how long it was going to take. That some of them probably wanted to go home, but they remember and they encouraged each other and said, no, he told us to stay there until we had received the power. And so in, in verse one, it says, so they went there and they were all with one accord in one place. Listen, y'all, we're not going to get our situations resolved until we get on one accord. The reason why our nation and our country and this world is so divided is because nobody is on one accord. Amen. So they all got on one accord and they were in the same place. And then verse two says, then suddenly, so right when that moment, when they finally got to the point where they were on one accord, listen, if you and your husband and you and your wife, you and your family, you and your friends, your church, if y'all can finally get on one accord, suddenly, you see that? Just suddenly, it a sound came from heaven, and it was a sound like a rushing mighty wind. You know, y'all know how it sounds when the wind blowing is a tornado and or, or sound like it's about to uh, be a hurricane or tornado, and you hear that rushing mighty wind almost sound like a, a train coming. And the Bible says, then it filled the house where they were sitting. So that Holy Ghost came down, the power came down, and it filled the room, and everybody in the room, all 120 of them, because they all got on one accord, and then there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as fire. In other words, there's little clothes that just like a little fire just set on top of their head. And see, listen, it didn't just sit on top of their head. It said, verse four, and then they were all filled, filled. Somebody say filled with the Holy Ghost. The problem right now is we get a lot of believers, they get saved and, and they feel the spirit. And we all get a measure of the spirit when we get saved. Absolutely. Matter of fact, it's the spirit that drove, it's the spirit that drew you to Christ. It was the Holy Spirit that drew you to salvation. You didn't do that yourself. The Holy Spirit found you where you was and arrested you and brought you in. And, and, and you get a measure of his spirit dwelling around you. But see, it's not enough to get it dwelling around you. You got to have it inside you. That's why the Bible says, and, I, and you can read it for yourself. I've got it right here on the screen. That's right. Say that. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen, Deanna. So listen, he said, and they were filled with the Holy Ghost, which means that it didn't no longer just sit on top of it. It came down and it sat on, but then it went down inside them. Amen. It's like it's like the, 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 the head opened up to receive the power that shot from the head all the way down to their toes and it filled their soul. And listen, it said, and they began to speak with other tongues or other languages. And what that means is they began to speak in a language that they didn't learn. Look, they weren't by, they, they, they were, they, nobody taught them how these languages. They didn't come up there bilingual. They didn't come up there knowing uh, four and five different languages. The Holy Ghost gave them that language, that, that utterance. And that's so important as the spirit gives utterance because there's a lot of people out there teaching. They trying to teach you how to speak in tongues. They trying to tell you, just speak, just say what comes to your mind. Just start repeating stuff. Tie my bow tie, tie your bow tie. Tie my bow tie, tie your bow tie. He coming in a Hyundai. He coming in a Hyundai. You know, they going to tell you what, and they say, keep repeating it. Keep saying it faster and faster until you feel something. You can't be taught the Holy Ghost. You can't be taught how to speak in tongues. Listen, I don't care what they tell you. You don't speak in tongues on your own. The Holy Ghost does it. And the other languages, it speaks because they were in Jerusalem. And at that time, it was the, it was, uh, they had finished the Passover. And all of the people in Jerusalem at the time from all the countries and nations and languages were there giving an offering and making a tone. So the Holy Ghost had them all speak in other languages so that they could leave that room and go out. Listen, y'all catch that? 
so they can leave the room. They got filled, but they weren't supposed to stay in the room. In other words, you get filled, you get empowered at church, but you don't stay there. You leave the sanctuary and go into the world so you can use that which you was given to the world. So the disciples, they would go and they began to preach and teach to everyone in the streets. And the Bible says that all of the people heard their languages and they wondered if these guys were throw drunk. They like how are these guys drunk. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. They drunk with new wine, but they but they heard the gospel of Jesus being spoke to them in their languages, and they knew that these men did not know how to speak in these languages. That's what the Holy Spirit would do. Amen. The Holy Spirit will give you a language that you can interpret that you and then he'll give people to interpret as well, so that people will know what the Holy Spirit has to say to the churches. But the important thing is, is that last part as the spirit gave utterance. And listen, that's an example, or that is a sign that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pastor Steve, I don't speak in tongue. Okay. If you don't speak in tongue, or you've never spoken tongue, at what I would ask you then, how do you know that you have the spirit? Because the word says, every time you read, if you read the New Testament, Every time you read where somebody was filled with the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit, it says they had evidence. The evidence was speaking in tongue. The evidence, the sign that they had it didn't mean that they spoke in tongue every day. Don't mean you got to speak and you're going to speak in tongue every service. Some people spoke in tongue when they filled it and may not have spoken a sense. I would say they probably need to stir up the gift, but that's the evidence. So not only do you know it's there. But everybody around you know that you've been filled. So that's the mark. That's what you want to look for when somebody says that they've been filled with the spirit. But I'm going to give you some other things besides that so that you will know. Amen. So now we're going to jump down to our last verse, verse uh, one and eight, and we'll be done. Don't leave, y'all. Don't leave because you need the Holy Ghost. Whatever you got going on in your life, you're not going to be able to get through it without the Holy Ghost. I'm just telling you that right now. Amen. Get plugged into the source. All right, Acts 1 and 8, but ye shall receive power after, and I put it in caps so that you can see, you don't get the power before the Holy Spirit, you get the peer power after the Holy Spirit. You don't get, your phone don't start charging before you plug it into the uh, USB, it starts charging after you plug into the USB. Your lights, your lamp don't come on before you plug it in. Your lamp comes on after you plug it in. Thank you, Jesus. Matter of fact, your car don't start running before you turn the ignition. It starts running after you turn the ignition. So you shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and into the uttermost parts of the earth. And the important thing is the Holy Ghost is number one reason for filling you is to make you a witness. The Holy Ghost didn't fill you to make you a preacher. He didn't fill you to make you a reverend, a missionary, a bishop, a pastor. He filled you to be witnesses. So every believer is a witness. It don't matter what your title is in church. It don't matter what your position is. Everything you do in church is fine, but your first calling, everybody say, Pastor Steve, I don't know what the Lord called me to do. What is God? What is my purpose? I've been in church 20 years and I don't know what God called me to do. Everybody else know they call him, Pastor, but I don't know my calling. Your first calling is to witness. There, you just learned it today. So after today, you can no longer say you don't know what your calling is. Now, he may call you to do other things. He may add some things with that. But your first calling is we are all called to witness and the Holy Ghost gives us the power to equip us to witness so we can witness with conviction and courage. And then it says he told him to go into the uttermost parts of the world. You should be witnessing to somebody every day. That's why we're doing online ministry, because we're trying to go into the uttermost parts of the world. To witness. That's why, Pastor Steve, we're doing online ministry so we can reach more than just the people inside our building. But we're trying to get the gospel to all across the world. Amen. And the Holy Ghost will give us the power to do that. So now, as we get ready to close out, 
I want to tell you just five things. Y'all know I love to give you little steps so you can have those. So I'm going to give you five things that let you know they're called the five empowerment signs. And I see we got more people joining. God bless you all. Thank you all for joining. I love you all. I appreciate you. Thank you. Listen all the way through. We almost done. And you can always watch it again on YouTube, but we almost done. But thank you for joining us. All right. So the five empowerment signs. If you go to Mark 16, 17 to 18, it starts out saying, and these signs shall follow them that believe. And these signs, not no other signs, I don't care what nobody else tell you, the Bible says these are the signs that will follow them that believe. So if you are a believer in Christ, if you are a believer in Christ baptized with the Holy Spirit, there ought to be some signs. People ought to be able to see evidence that you are a believer. Amen. Other than you just, you don't have to wear it on your shirt. You ain't, I mean, nice merchandise is nice, but they need to see it in your lifestyle. Now, and I'm going to give you five of them right here because it said the five empowerment signs and these signs shall follow them that believe. Empowerment number one, in my name, they shall cast out devils, not in Pastor Steve's name, not in Minister Edmund's name, not in Deanna's name, not in your name, but in my name, Jesus said, and when you use the name of Jesus, devils tremble and devils will be cast out because I give you power to cast out devils and demons. Amen. So one of the things you get as a sign that you get empowered to do is cast out devils. We should be going, we should be able to fight the devil, cast the devil out of our loved ones, and it's not easy. And listen, the Bible says sometimes these kind of devils only come out by fasting and praying. So listen, you need to have, a, and I want to make this clear because I don't want y'all to take these signs and run out there ill-equipped. But you have to be prayed up. You have to be fasted up. You have to have a solid relationship with God in order because it's not you that the devil is going to be respecting. It's the power of God in you that, that's going to make the devil leave. Amen. And you remember when Jesus saw the man, that son that was filled with the legion, legions told him, God told him to get out. Jesus said, get out. He cast them out. And the, and the, and the legions asked him, they said, where should we go? They asked Jesus permission. And he said, they asked, can we go into that herd of swine over there? Jesus gave them permission. And the Bible said they went into the herd of pigs and the pigs went, chased themselves off the cliff and into the ocean. But they needed Jesus permission. So and God is telling us greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. So you ought to have the power of the spirit to cast out devils. Amen. Empowerment number two. They shall speak with new tongues and languages. I just thought we talked about that. Listen, God, the, some people have the power to speak. And listen, you'll be able to prophesy to somebody in their own language. Amen. And those will, all, and he can also give you the gift to interpret as well. But you'll have to speak in new tongues, which means even when you go forth in your praise, there is a praise in tongues where you pray in tongues. There's a praise where you just, you know, you're praising God and you're worshiping God and the Holy Ghost begins to rise up and speak and give praises that you don't understand. Amen. It's a heavenly language. It's a language the devil don't understand. But listen, God can give you the, if you don't know Chinese, and you go out there and witness a person from China, the Holy Ghost can give you the power to, to witness to them in their language. That's And I know people say that was just for the disciples. People don't do any of that anymore. That's because it's not taught anymore. But GWC Ministries, you better believe Pastor Steve is going to teach you because that's what the Bible said. Amen. All right. The next thing is empowerment number three, they shall take up deadly snakes. Let me get this straight. I'm not telling you, don't you run out there. Don't, 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 don't listen. Don't do that. Don't run out there and say, Pastor Steve said, I can go out and take up deadly snakes. I didn't say go out and take up no deadly snake. What it was saying was, if you happen to come across and you get bit by a snake, I'm not talking about you a snake charmer and you out there, them people, and they got the flute and they charming the snake or they wrapping them anacondas around their neck. And I'm not telling you that. Don't you tempt God like that. 
What I'm saying is, if you happen to get bit by a venomous snake, the Holy Spirit will make it not harm you. And I put in there, read the story about Paul, the apostle Paul, who, when he was shipwrecked and they had got on the island, they went, Paul went to find wood for the fire. And in the wood, there was a snake in the wood and it bit Paul. And matter of fact, it fastened itself on Paul's arm. And all the other people that was with Paul, they were sitting there watching him. And Paul took that snake. He did just like this. And he shook it. He shook it off him and into the fire. And everybody stood there watching to see when the venom was going to kick in. When the, when the, when, when Paul was going to pass out. When he was going to swell up. When he was going to blow up. When he was going to die. They were waiting. But guess what, y'all? Because Paul was filled with the Holy Ghost. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. They were waiting for nothing because Paul was not harmed. That's because he had the power of the Holy Spirit dwelling on the inside. Amen. He didn't go looking for the snake. Paul was looking for fire, to for wood for the fire. But snakes live around wood and it grabbed his arm. But because he had the Holy Spirit, he was able to shake it off. Listen, you better touch your neighbor and say, shake it off. Whatever that thing, whatever that snake is in your life, and it may not be a real snake, but it's a snake. It's a snake that's a friend. It's a snake that's a loved one. It's a snake that's a family member. It's a snake that's an enemy. It's a snake on your job, a coworker. It's a snake somewhere. All you got, and it's fastened itself to your arm. Just do like this and shake it off because you got the power of the Holy Ghost to shake it off. Thank you, Jesus. The next thing is we just about done. Number four, empowerment number four. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. Amen. Again, it does not mean you go get you a bottle of rat poison. Go get you a bottle of cyanide. Go bitch, get you a bottle of bleach or whatever, something. With it, we're not saying that. The Holy Spirit, if you happen to get poison, if you happen to accidentally get some poison, the Holy Spirit, with the power of the Holy Ghost, it can make it where it does not harm you. Again, we don't go looking for these things, trying to test it out. So you can say, well, Pastor Steve didn't know what he was talking about. He lied to us. I drank that poison and I got, now I'm sitting here in ICU. Well, I didn't tell you to do that. I said, if you happen to get poison, the Holy Ghost can protect you. Amen. Lastly, number five, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Amen. One of the signs of them that believe, listen, I'm making it clear. It didn't say these signs shall follow them that are pastors. These signs shall follow them that are missionaries. These signs shall follow them that are deacons. These signs shall follow them that are bishops. No, it said these signs shall follow them that believe. That means every believer if you're an usher, a greeter, a layman uh, in the youth choir, if you don't have no position in the church at all, but you believe God, these signs shall follow you too. Amen. You will be able to pray for someone and lay hands on them. And the power, not you, don't get it twisted. It's not you. You and we can't do nothing, Pastor Steve. I can pray for you all day long, but unless the Holy Ghost do the healing, ain't nothing going to happen. But he told me, he said, the, James said in James 5 and 14 and 15, if there's any sick among you, let them call for the elders of the church. Let them call for those that have the Holy Ghost who will, who will pray the prayer of faith. Anoint them with oil and they, and they shall recover. Amen. Pray the prayer of faith, anoint them with oil, lay hands on them and they shall recover. Uh, have they shall be healed, and the important thing it says, pray the prayer of faith. Listen, ain't no need of you talking about you gonna lay hands on somebody because to heal them and you don't have no faith. You gotta pray the prayer of faith. But listen, you got loved ones, you should be able to pray for them too. You should be able to pray for yourself. If you can't get to Pastor Steve, if you can't get to your pastor. You should be able to lay hands on yourself. You should be able to lay hands on your family. Brother Caleb and his family, they prayed and laid hands on their own mama. Amen. They had everybody else helping to pray, but they got there in the hospital and they laid hands and prayed for their mama themselves. 
because they have faith to believe that God would raise her up. And that's what will happen. You see here, he said, and they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It didn't say, and they might recover. It's possible they could recover. It said, and they shall recover. And every shell in the Bible is loaded. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So these are the five empowerment signs that you will know that the Holy Ghost is dwelling on the inside. Amen. I'll put these notes out there for you to have. Go back and review them. Read these scriptures for yourself. But listen, if you don't have the power of the Holy Ghost, you need to begin to seek the Lord for it. Ask the Lord to fill me. Listen. You, I, at one point, I thought I had the Holy Ghost, but the Lord had to let me know I didn't have it some years ago. And rather than be ashamed and embarrassed and, and, and make people think I had something I didn't, I said, Lord, listen, if I don't have it, I want it. I begin to pray like Bishop Mason said, listen, whatever I don't have that I'm supposed to have, God give it to me. And I said, Lord, I don't, he showed me that I didn't have his Holy Spirit on the inside. So I started seeking for it. I was at church. I was praying. I was tarrying. I was on the altar. I was at home. And listen, God can fill you in your basement. God can fill you in your house. He can fill you at church. Wherever you begin to seek the Lord and get on one accord, that suddenly, thank you, suddenly can show up for you. And I'm going to tell you this and I'm done. If he fill you at home, guess what? When you get to church, he'll show up there too. Because guess what? He wants to let you know that he's there with the evidence of speaking in tongue. And then he's going to let the church know through the evidence of speaking in tongue. You don't have to come in and, 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 and make it happen. You don't have to force it. The Holy Spirit will act on his own and it's going to let everybody know. But after you get through speaking in tongue, start witnessing. Amen. Start witnessing. And when GWC, next month, we're going to start our witnessing series so we can empower everybody to witness. Because this is the 2022, the year of empowerment. And that's why we're having this message today to empower you to plug up to the source. And I'm going to put it back up there to plug up to the source, which is the Holy Spirit. Amen. So plug in. Listen, don't be ashamed. Don't feel bad. Listen. I saw a lot of people get filled with the Holy Ghost before me. We we had revivals. We had Terry service. And listen, I saw people getting filled on a Monday and a, a Tuesday, a Wednesday. And I'm seeking. I was seeking too. And then look, it wasn't my night. So I had to seek a little harder. But listen, I said, Lord, I don't care if I'm the last one you feel. I don't care if I'm the last one you feel. I just want the Holy Ghost because I want you all to know this. It's the Holy Ghost is going to get you out the grave. When the rapture come and Jesus come, if you dead, it's the Holy Ghost that's going to get you up out the grave. That's your vehicle to get in the caught up in the rapture. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We'll teach on that a little bit more in the future. But right now, you need the Holy Ghost. Amen. You need the Holy Ghost. If you don't have it, you can get it. You don't have it, you can get it. Is the Bible says it's for you your children and your children's children and as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Amen. So you don't have to be white, black, Chinese, rich or poor. You can get the Holy Spirit. Amen. So we thank you for listening to our broadcast and listen, we never want to close our broadcast without giving you an opportunity to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior and to, re to even get a closer walk with him. You may have backslidden and you need to come back to Christ. It's okay. Jesus said, I'm married. God, the Bible says, God is married to the backslider. Amen. So don't worry about what you did. Don't make the devil, let the devil tell you, you know, it went too far out that you can't come back. That's not true. God is waiting right now. So repeat this prayer after me. Say, Father, I'm sorry. Matter of fact, everybody should do it anyway, because we need to be, we need to repent every day. Amen. Even if you don't know you did nothing wrong, you need to repeat this. Say, Father, I'm sorry for every sin I've ever committed. Wash me in your blood. Forgive me. I accept you as Lord and Savior of my life. I denounce Satan and I accept you, God. Come into my life and wash me and I will serve you till I die. Thank you, Jesus. Now, if you prayed that prayer and you earnestly prayed it in faith and you meant it, 
Listen, you just got born again. You are now a candidate. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, you got to repent first. You got to get saved first. Then you get the Holy Ghost. There's an order of things. Amen. So now you are now a candidate. If you accepted Christ as your Savior today, you are now a candidate to receive the Holy Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit that's going to keep you saved. Pastor Steve can't stay saved by himself. You can't stay saved by yourself. With all that's going on in the world, the temptations and the devil and the things he's trying to do, you got a power. You need a power greater than you to keep you saved. Amen. Until God returns. And that is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Why not contact us at info at gwcministries.org? Say, Pastor Steve, I gave my life to the Lord today. I want to be a part of your ministry. And even if I'm not, if you're not in the area, you can be a part of our ministry. And listen, you don't you can go to any church you want in your area. All we're saying is get into a Bible believing church. Get somewhere where you can be among believers and you can have a shepherd that can help you walk, uh, uh, navigate this new Christian walk. Amen. We love to have you be a part of us. And as we're working hard to get a building, uh, we're working very hard to have in-person services and continue to have our online services. So then when you have in our area, you can come and see us and you can meet me face to face and I can meet you face to face. Amen. So right now it's it's blessing time. Anybody need a blessing? Anybody need a blessing? Amen. It's blessing time. We're asking right now. Amen. Don't leave. Don't leave yet because you'll lose your blessing if you leave now. Listen, God desires that you give. God's blessing plan is giving. You can't pray your way out of debt. You can't just fast your way out of debt. You have to give your way out of debt. And I've asked you if you will become one of our Empower Partners, join our Empower Partners team today. I thank God for our Empower Partners, amen, that send us a little something each month to help us do what we do, amen, amen, amen. And I thank God for them and God is blessing them. They have testified that since they've been helping this ministry, they, God has been blessing them, amen. So become an Empower Partner and begin to sow a monthly seed uh, we hope you can sow at least $25 each week. Amen. But if you don't have a church and you have don't pay your tithes, listen, beloved, you're never going to get ahead. You can't level up if you're not paying your tithes. You can't level up if you're paying your tithes one time and not another. You got to be consistent. Amen. So you can send your tithes. You can send your offering to any of the four methods we have on the screen right there. Why not go to your phone right now? Don't wait. Get your blessing. Go to your phone right now and sow that seed of faith right now into the ministry. Amen. You can cash app us. You can zell us. You can find us on Giblify or you can use our P.O. box. But listen, if you want to be blessed, you got to pay your tithes and offerings. You say, Pastor, I can't afford to pay my tithes. I can't afford to give. Well, I'm telling you the reason why you can't afford to do those things is because you don't give. Amen. Watch God work. Pay your tithes, give your offering. We believe this is a good ministry to sow seed into. Listen, speak, ask the Lord to speak you to an offering that can help us get a building, that can help us get a space. You know, ask the Lord to speak to you about what you can give. I'm not going to tell you, but listen, you ask the Lord to speak to you and let the Holy Ghost lead you. And God will say, I will give it back to you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over will men give unto your bosom. God bless you, and we thank you today for your giving, and we pray that God blesses you abundantly. That has been our broadcast for today. We're so happy you joined us today, and we hope that you come back and see us next week. Next week is Father's Day. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll be having our special Father's Day tribute to Father's Day broadcast next week. Amen. Come and be a part of the broadcast next week. And let's celebrate these fathers. Amen. Let's let the fathers know that we appreciate them. Let the fathers know that we acknowledge that they're stepping up to the plate and they're doing what they have to do to take care of their families. Amen. So even if your father's not alive or you might be like me and you never had one, we can still celebrate fathers. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So we thank you all for joining. Have a blessed week and come on back. And go tell somebody about the Word Works broadcast. Amen. We love you and we thank God for you. And listen, we pray now that you go forth 
and perform great works.